Hey guys, what is going on? It's Nan here, and in this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about the major differences between owning a maxi scooter or a scooter that has a larger engine capacity and is generally bigger in size as well. And uh, I'll be comparing it to my Super Cup here or any other 125 or 150 cc scooter. Uh, now, I get that the Super Cup isn't technically a scooter, but I have owned a few 125s and 150cc scooters in the past, so I'll use that knowledge to kind of give you guys the differences and the pros and cons of owning a maxi scooter or a 125 or a 150cc scooter. Just something to kind of point out is that when I say a maxi scooter, there's a lot of different definitions floating around. I'm basically talking about scooters that are, again, bigger in size and also have that bigger engine capacity. Uh, I get that, for example, Yamaha actually sells this same scooter as a 125, so in that case, you know, the comparison isn't as clear, but generally I'm just talking about your smaller 125s and 150cc scooters, and then I'm, I'm comparing them to your larger scooters, your maxi scooters that have that larger engine and then, again, larger dimensions. So, uh, to kick out the video, let's talk about those dimensions. So let's actually take a seat here on my uh, on my X Max, so you guys can take a look. Now, when I'm sitting on the X Max, I don't know if you guys can uh, see this one on camera, but uh, this is it's a, it's a big bike. You know, there is there is uh, no doubt about it. It feels it feels big. It's you know it's kind of heavy. I believe this bike is around 400 pounds or so. I'm not quite sure, uh, but. So there's actually pros and cons to that. The biggest, the biggest pro, actually, let's start with the pros, is just the fact that maxi scooters will give you a lot more protection from the weather elements. So as you guys can see, there's a ton of plastic panels here. I have this really nice width screen, which I can adjust. And typically, when I'm sitting on the scooter, if I put my legs up here on the footrest, you guys can see that basically my entire body is covered from the weather elements just because I have a lot of plastics here in front of me, which is really nice. And that actually comes in handy when you're out on the freeway and you're going at you know high speeds and there's a ton of wind, or when you are uh, just driving to bad weather. Because I have taken my X Max in some really bad weather conditions, and you don't get what whatsoever, which is really cool. Because once you're once you're on the road, once you're going and whatnot, all of these plastics they'll protect you from those from those weather elements, which is really nice. Now, obviously, there's a con to that as well. This being kind of a big scooter, as you guys can see, I'm right at about six feet, actually maybe even over six feet tall with shoes on, and I kind of have to tippy toe my X Max. Now, this isn't a big deal for me, just because I feel comfortable doing that. You know, it's it's kind of fun to balance it on my tippy toes. But for new riders, that can kind of be intimidating because the seat is kind of wide, as you guys can see, and then having such a big scooter between your legs can again be kind of scary and intimidating and if you're not sure how to balance it then you can easily maybe tip it over and that's one of the uh, one of the i think most common things that happens when people drop their bikes is they'll just have it in between their legs they'll try to tip to one side and then they'll just lose their balance and then at one point the bike just becomes really heavy because obviously you know it's 400 pounds and whatnot so again the biggest pro is just the fact that you get a ton of protection for the weather. The biggest con is just the fact that it is big and it's kind of uh, in intimidating for new riders. Now let's take a look at the Super Cup so you guys can kind of see uh, the difference actually there. Now again, as I've said, the Super Cup isn't your typical 125cc scooter or a 150, just again because I do have to shift through gears and I don't have any storage underneath the seat and whatnot, but generally, this is the size that uh, most of the 125s and 150cc scooters will be. Now again, as I've said, there are, for example, scooters that even Yamaha and Honda makes that are basically maxi scooters with smaller engine capacity, and I think that's mainly done because of the license requirements, but typically, again, I'm talking about your general 125s and 150cc scooters, which will kind of be similar in dimensions to my Super Cup here. Now, the biggest pro to sitting on the Super Cup, obviously, as you guys can see, I'll move a bit forward, I can easily flat foot it. The Super Cup isn't as heavy, so it, just, it feels really nice and comfortable sitting on the Super Cup, just because you have that confidence, because again, you're, my feet are flat foot, you cannot tip it on, so it's much easier to control the bike between your legs, and that's a big factor for somebody who is just getting into riding. Uh, I had, I've actually given both of my scooters to my friends who have never ridden motorcycles before and the biggest concerns that I have is just kind of dealing with that weight. 
With a super cut, there isn't a lot of weight, the seat is really low, you can easily flat foot it, so it's a lot easier in that aspect. Even though, for example, on this bike, you have to shift through gears, uh, a lot of my friends prefer that than using the X-Max just because the X-Max is just really, really big in dimensions. So um, again, the biggest pro is just the fact that it's much less intimidating, it's much easier for somebody who's new to riding to get on and ride, but again, the uh, downside of that is there really is no weather protection, right? And the smaller the scooter, obviously, the more exposed you are to the weather, and uh, that's just something that you kind of have to deal with. Now, uh, the second thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is obviously the big one, which is the performance. Now, I'll actually take both of these scooters out for a ride later in the video, but let's just kind of give you guys um, some, uh, some information in regards to that. Uh, your 125 and 150cc scooters are generally best used in you know, cities and just kind of riding around the city, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Now, that's not to say that you can't take your 150cc scooter out on, I don't know, a country road and take it for a long journey and whatnot. You can, but that journey will not be as comfortable as if you were to use a maxi scooter like my X-Max here. Again, just because with the X-Max, I have a lot more horsepower, it's much safer because I can be in and out of people's ways, I can cruise easily, keep up with the traffic, so from that uh, point of view, it's much better than have the larger engine capacity. Uh, that's why, at least again, in my opinion, your 125cc and your 150cc scooters are best suited for short city commutes. And that's actually where they excel. That's their biggest, I think, selling point. It's just because they're so easy to get on and they're so easy to ride and they're so easy to park. And uh, it's, it's just awesome. If you live in a city and you don't have that need to take the scooter out you know, on these big open roads, then going with something like the Super Cup or any 125 or 150cc scooter is actually a great idea. Now, the con again to that is just the fact that that don't give you that freedom that, for example, my Yamaha X-Max here gives me. Uh, just to kind of give you guys a short story on how I got the X-Max, I don't know if you guys seen that video. Uh, I basically went down to the Kansas City, which is about 660 some miles from where I live here in Northern Illinois, and I picked up the bike and then I rode it back home literally in a day. And I was on the highway for most of the journey doing about 70, and I had zero issues whatsoever. If, the, if, if my X-Max was like a, the Super Cup, that just would not have been possible or I would have gone through a lot of pain to do that just because, again, the Super Cup, you can't take it around on the freeway, you are really slow, it's not as comfortable, you don't get as much weather protection, so all of the, those things kind of add up when you're taking the bikes on longer journeys, but uh, in the city, where you don't really care about those things, you know, you're just going on short five, 10, 15 mile journeys, they're perfect just because, again, they're easier to ride, they're easier to kind of maneuver, um, it's easier for you to turn around to control the bike, so in that aspect, it's much nicer riding something that's smaller when you're in the city. Now, the third thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about is um, maintenance and cost of work ownership. So, uh, generally, the smaller the scooter, the uh, the more frequently you will have to maintain it, do things like changing the oil, changing the belts, uh, valve adjustments, changing the gear oil, and things like that. Uh, so from that aspect, again, you will have to maintain them a bit more frequently, which isn't really a big deal because most of that maintenance is really straightforward and something that you can do pretty much in your garage. Uh, when you have a bigger scooter, those intervals are actually much larger. I believe the intervals for the X-Max are, I think four, like four or 7,000 for the engine oil. And I think the gear oil is like 12,000 miles, which is a lot of miles we have to get before you have to change out the gear oil, which is kind of cool. I believe the belt is rated at 15,000 miles, which is, again, it gives you a lot of riding without you having to worry about doing any of the maintenance. But generally, when you do have to do that maintenance, it's going to be a bit trickier just because there's a ton more plastics. You'll be, you'll be needing to take off a lot of these covers. Most of the larger engine capacity scooters will be liquid cooled, so you have to worry about coolant. If they have uh, disc brakes broke front and back, then you're going to have to bleed those brakes every two or three years. 
Uh, smaller scooters typically will mainly have a disc brake on the front and then a, um, a uh, what do you call it, a drum brake on the back and then with the drum brake there really is no maintenance and whatnot. So from that aspect, you know, you'll have to maintain your smaller scooters a tad bit more frequently, but the maintenance is usually a bit easier compared to maintaining your big maxi scooter. Again, you know, belts and things like that will typically be a bit more expensive for your maxi scooters, but generally maintenance of scooters is really affordable. Uh, just to kind of give you guys some, uh, uh, some idea, for example, the belt for my X-Max is about 70 bucks and again that lasts you about 15,000 miles. It takes um, a bit more than a quart of oil, I think, I'm not really sure, I forgot. Uh, that's like 10 bucks, you know, the oil filter is about like 6-7 bucks and uh, the gear oil basically takes I think like half a quart, even actually I think even less than that. So uh, it's really easy to maintain, uh, to maintain and it's really cheap to maintain your scooters. The biggest cost will be the tires which for whatever reason tend to wear out fairly quickly on motorcycles. Uh, uh, just again, but that's mainly because the tires on motorcycles, on motorcycles have to stick to the road surface better than car tires, obviously, because you only have two wheels, so they can uh, tend to wear uh, a bit quicker. So, for example, on my X Max here, I can maybe get 10,000 miles out of the set of tires on your smaller scooters. You're lucky to get about five to about maybe 7,000 miles or so, and then tires will run you anywhere between, I don't know, like. 50 and like a hundred bucks depending on what kind of a what kind of tire you want to go and then if you want somebody to actually professionally install those tires for you that's probably another 50 or um, yeah 50 or 60 bucks per tire as well uh, other than that there really isn't a lot to these guys that's why in my opinion they are uh, one of the best ways to kind of get around especially if you live in the city because they're cheap to run and cheap to maintain uh, as uh, as far as the, uh, the efficiency of these guys goes Obviously, the smaller engine capacity, the more uh, miles per gallon you'll be able to get. In most cases, depending on if the bike is carbureted or fuel injected, uh, 125 or 150, you should be able to get at least uh, about 100 miles or so out of your 125s and 150s. Like this, the Honda Super Cup here gets like 150 miles per gallon, which is truly really ridiculous. Uh, your figure scooters will get anywhere between 70 and 80 miles per gallon. So again, an awesome figure, it's just they're not as efficient as your smaller scooter, which again makes sense considering they have pretty much engine that's doubled in size. And they're also a lot heavier as well. Um, yeah, that's I, I guess that's about it for this video, guys. I don't know if you guys have any other questions, but that's pretty much all I, all I wanted to cover. Uh, well, I guess one more point is that if you're in the market uh, and you're looking to get a scooter and you're thinking, well, what is, what is the right scooter for me? Uh, I think the first thing that you kind of ask yourself is, what is your budget? You kind of have to think about your budget, and then when you have that budget figured out, think about the uh, case scenarios where you'll be using that scooter. If you're somebody who lives in, uh, I don't know, downtown New York, and you just need something to basically, you know, get around the city, there is no need for you to have, you know, a big maxi scooter that, uh, you know, is a lot, a lot more expensive, is, uh, is, again, it's bigger and whatnot, so it's not maybe as nimble as your smaller one, just because, again, if you're in the city and you just need to go, like, up to 45 miles per hour, a 125cc scooter will be probably your best option. Now, if you're somebody who needs that uh, speed that is uh, higher than 45, and this is one of the questions that I guess most often, like what is the top speed? If you're looking for that top speed, if you need a bike to like give you that, you know, 60 to 65 miles per hour constantly, then your best bet is to get something bigger just because it would be a lot more safer. As you guys know, when you're out on the street where the speed limit is 55, nobody's really going 55, everybody's going like 65 or so. And like on the Super Cup, it's kind of a pain to get on those streets just because uh, I'm kind of just annoying all the other drivers on the road because I'm like the, the slowest one and they have to kind of you know go past me and if it's just a one lane that I'm keeping people behind me so from that point of view it's just kind of I'm just being a nuisance for everybody else uh, but again in the city definitely get a 125 or a 150 
And uh, if you need something that's a bit more capable, you know, just think about that and then get something that has the larger energy capacity. Maybe even a 200 should be enough to get you to about 70 miles per hour, which is, again, pretty much all you need if you need uh, to get on those country roads and whatnot. As far as highway capability is concerned, then you, in most cases you're going to need something that has that 300 or so cc's or more because for example, my X-Max here is capable of going about 95 miles per hour and it easily cruises at 75. Even 75, you have some, you have some uh, reserve left. You have some power, power left in reserve. And that's actually nice because if somebody's kind of in front of you, they're kind of slow, you can pass them. If you need to get out of people's way, you can do that as well. And you're just not annoying anybody on the road, which is really nice. So, uh, and that's also the safest thing to do. Um, that's that's about it for this video. So I'll take both out on a short ride so you guys can see how that looks from my perspective. And then uh, that'll be it. Thank you guys so much. And uh, if you guys have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer every single question that I get. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next one.